I've told the story. You see it all the time where a, a man dies of a heart attack or is dying in a in a Walmart and people walk by him for an hour. Or an Austin cop got run over a few years ago and bled to death for over an hour and no one helped him. I saw a woman choking once in a restaurant. No one would help her and I had to push him out of the way through the Heimlich and they were angry saying, no, wait for police. And I'm like, I didn't say, hey, idiot, she's going to die before the police get here. And I'm not exceptional. I mean, I, I, I took swim team for four or five years and... They had the fire department come by and, you know, uh, for those that wanted to take it and took a basic life-saving thing. I mean, if I'm choking, I want somebody to help me. I mean, Americans didn't used to be like this. They're in a trance, H Hoppy. Uh, comment on that or, or we'll get a comment from Chris Emery. Um, <clears throat> cognitive dissonance is what I call it. Uh, people are trained <clears throat> by the public school system and other forces to accept certain things as absolute truths. <clears throat> and any time something doesn't fit <clears throat> inside that box, their own personal box of absolute truths, if it doesn't fit inside that, they simply can't accept it. Now, anybody that's gone to a, <clears throat> a concert and heard those instruments tuning up, getting ready for the concert, understands what dissonance is. I mean, it's the most terrible sound you've ever heard. Well, actually, each one of those instruments is playing what it's supposed to play. They're just not playing in the same order. So it's not till a concert starts and they all play in the same order that, that a understandable tune comes out of all those instruments. And the same thing with information. If you're not able to put together information then you'll never be able to hear the concert. All you're able to hear is the is the tuning up, the dissonance. And people <clears throat> that can't think outside the box, as they say, people that don't have the independent thought or the capacity to understand or the willingness to accept the truth. And the Bible says that nobody will believe the truth in the end. And I see that everywhere. Uh, people that just they just can't do that and it's sad well i was about to add it's worse than that in many cases they know the information they think if they choose to say the government didn't carry out 9-11 or, or or oklahoma city or gulf of tonkin even though it's admitted to be staged that somehow that makes it true i've had engineers smart people uh sit there and look me right in the eye you know they'll confront me first and say uh you know i, I like what you do in some areas but but, you know, it's impossible that the government could do 9-11. I said, well, what about Tuskegee experiment, all this? What about this evidence of 9-11? He said, oh, I hear what you're saying, but I choose not to believe it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I said, yeah, I understand. You think you just make a decision and that, that, you know, that makes it so. I mean, that is, that is willful mind control, and that is cowards that are so cowardly. At least a, a, a run-of-the-mill coward says, I'm a coward. I'm going to run from this evil and, you know, go hide in your shame. I, I get that. I mean, I'm not even mad at those people. Okay, you're scared. You're scared of the scary men coming and getting you. Hey, you're going to die anyways, buddy. Nobody's going to live forever. I'm not going to live on my knees. I, but I'm not mad at a, a straight-up coward. But these, pe these men and women that are so cowardly, they do a mind flip and say, I just choose not to believe it. That is a coward's coward. Chris Emery, your comments on why you've d done what you've done. Right after I would uh, met with Craig Roberts, he gave me a, a set of blueprints that Southwestern Bell had supplied to a lot of the um, litigants, the people that were suing for insurance claims and, and so forth. And on the uh, second floor, what convinced me to really push ahead on this was there was a, uh, a layout of the deceased, and it list listed four babies in cribs against the front window. They were less than four months old. And as the saying goes here in Oklahoma City, oh, hell no. We're not going to give up until we find out what happened, who butchered these kids, who killed these people when they were going about their business on a normal work day and yanked them out of this life and the life hereafter. And they dare to lie about this. We're better than that. And it's people like Hoppy and yourself, the guys in my film crew. I'm really proud to, to be able to work with you. And this is this is a true American here. Absolutely. And if you look at it, what we do now is going to be a testament to future generations and the fact that we've exposed Oklahoma City, Hoppy from day one, and General Parton and others, 
and, and, and Jane Graham and the victims, the fact that we've exposed other false flags, they're always trying to resuscitate it. But once the genie's out of the bottle, look at what happened with Kurt Haskell and his wife, both lawyers. They see a sharp-dressed guy getting the underwear bomber, Christmas Day guy, on the plane, arguing, demanding, and so powerful, he was able to order security to let him on without a passport. Then they witness the whole thing happen. They tell the public. The media says they're full of it. And then later, the State Department admits, yeah, the U.S. government ordered us to help get him on the plane. I mean, the fact is, is we are people who are awake and love the truth. We're everywhere now. And when you murderers try to nuke something or blow something up and dance around as our saviors, everybody knows where to look. We know about your lies about WMDs. We know about you now. Robin Cook uh, in England went public with the lies saying 9-11 was staged. They killed him right after that. Uh, in England, I mean, the point is that we are exposing one of their favorite tricks, and they don't like it. You got any other comments? No, I, you're right on the money, Alex. There's only one other thing I would say, but I don't know what much time we have. Yeah, plenty of time. Okay. <clears throat> the second point that General Parton made that's easily understood and very important. When, you when blast pressure pushes, when blast pressure pushes against a steel reinforced column and it pushes that column over, it does break the concrete. But it only bends the steel bars inside the concrete. If the columns in Oklahoma City had been downed by blast pressure, the reinforcing steel rods inside those columns would still be there and just bent over. Parton said those steel rods had been cut. You can see the blast points. Only Imperial yeah. Stormtroopers are so precise. Yeah. So there's no there's a big difference, and I do this in a demonstration sometimes. I'll take two pencils, I'll break one with my hands, I'll saw one in half with a with a little uh hacksaw blade and I will ask anybody in the audience if they could not put those halves back together again correctly and everybody I mean you can look and see which one that's, that I broke with my hands because it's so irregular and so uh, shattered looking and then the one that I cut is so smooth it's anybody can put that back together and why anybody can't understand that when those columns, when that steel rebar inside the column was actually cut, those had to be cutting charges on the column itself. That was not blast pressure. Well, you can see the video and the photos. There's even blast points right there. Um, expanding on that, why, why do you think from your deep research, Chris and Hoppy, why didn't they just go with the truck bomb? That probably would have killed some of the kids and been, you know, still good for them uh, to be able to get our guns and demonize patriots and blame it on us and make people forget about Waco. Mm. But, 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 but why, why have them go in and wire it all up and all that? I mean, I guess they just wanted to kill more federal, federal employees. Well, because of 93, you see, they weren't <clears throat> careful enough. They weren't thorough enough in 93, and they didn't get the terrorist bill passed. So they w planned if every bomb that was inside the building would have gone off it would probably have leveled the whole building and that's what they were looking to do because they were looking for maximum body count to get the legislation passed there was a uh, an officer with army cid uh, we couldn't get him on uh, it's, it's basically the military version of the fbi we couldn't get him on camera he refused to talk but he did uh relay this to a member of the bombing committee right after the bombing committee was formed that he showed up on the crime scene within about three hours he was given his id and a hard hat and he started asking questions to atf and fbi once they knew that he was there to look at it objectively that was his job in the vietnam war he had to assess bomb damage and they, they kicked him off they said don't you say a word we know where your daughter goes to school we know where your wife works and that was it yeah, right there. You know where my daughter works? Well, you did. <laughs> I mean, right then, man, I tell you what, just scum, filth of the earth. And they ship guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. Our government is run by the most larcenous, child murdering criminals you can imagine. And it's time to be brought to justice. By the way, we'll cover it on the nightly news tonight, but there's articles about more people resigning in connection to Penn State for 
pedophile rings, and that's come out uh, from other witnesses that originally broke the information and were ignored. Yeah, he wasn't in there raping children by himself. Okay, this, this is the people that run our society. And they think our children are there to blow up and rape, and they, they got the TSA, the public accepting them, grabbing little girls' genitals. They have men grope little two-year-old girls. I mean, this is a sick country. This is a sick, sick country. And we've got to admit how sick it's gotten. Land of the free, home of the brave. Like, I'm not even going to go into overdrive. We're just going to end it right here in four or five minutes with our guest, and then Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow. We've got a big article up here. Uh, pray for us. Pray for Hoppy Heidelberg, folks. Pray for Chris Henry. Pray for Ron Paul. Pray for me. I mean, you know, I, I'm not afraid to die, but I sure don't want to. But somebody's going to stand up against these killers. I cannot live just sitting here on my hands while these people get away with this stuff. I've got to do the research. I've got to face the facts. Uh, the governor's act of sabotage in Iowa, an outrageous attempt to tamper with election process. Iowa governor urges voters to ignore result if Ron Paul wins. Uh, just unbelievable Neo Connery. Get that information out to everybody from InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. we got to hammer these people right now and Politico and others. Finishing up with Hoppy Heidelberg uh, and, of course, Chris Emery in the few minutes we've got left. Any other little uh, points? I mean, hopefully tonight we'll bring up uh, with you guys some of the other people, Chris, you talked to, like police officers and others, who were also threatened and what's covered in the film of Noble Lie. But imagine uh, the ATF and FBI telling you know the, the military bomb expert who's there uh you forget you saw this we know where your daughter goes to school i mean i would have real trouble just on the spot not going uh caveman it was yeah, that was absolutely incredible uh, when i heard that one other point i want to bring up i was hoppy and i were just discussing this um, off uh, during break howard shapiro was the gentleman that was calling for another oklahoma city bombing i believe recently and in the last year or so he actually served on the city council here in oklahoma city for a while was best friends with uh, uh hillary clinton and also uh, worked with former director larry potts with igi well igi is pretty much a hit squad it's it's uh, retired. We know this, and I have no problem saying this on the air. Retired FBI agents, folks that pretty much went off uh, off the, the script. And uh, they had an office down town here in Oklahoma City. Howard Shapiro worked for that firm. And so you, you see how these people just have a – they're circling back. They have – it boils down to they have no regard for human life. That's who we're dealing with all the time here in Oklahoma City, Alex, trying to research his case. Uh, so I empathize with you when you get excited on your show. We get frustrated up here, too, and it's it's plain as day. This is a, a poorly written script for a, a, a uh, uh, the Twilight Zone uh, movie, and they just, they never say cut. The tape keeps rolling. It always, it, that's the way it is. And it's only our denial empowers it. As Hoppy said, evil men and tyrants flourish when good men and women do nothing. That's all they need to flourish, and we empower them by our cowardice, by our weakness, by our laziness, and it's going to get. And, and you're right; people connected to it are, are think we're so dumb, Poppy, that, that that they sit there and go, "Man, a new Oklahoma City would sure help us in the biggest newspapers in the world." I mean, how dumb do they think we are? What do you think? When you get the final well, final? I did, I'm just going to put it aside in there. I'm a member of Mensa. And uh, I got permission to address the local Mensa chapter uh, with my experiences at the Oklahoma Grand Jury. And these are people with 150, 160, 70, 180 IQ. These are very bright people. And I, it never occurred to me that they wouldn't be smart enough to figure out what I was telling them. And I was shocked when they didn't believe a word I said. Well, no, no. They were smart enough to lie to themselves because they're cowards. Okay, plus it's a self-worship deal. I don't think you pay enough money, they'll let uh, anybody in. God bless you. We'll see you tonight, 7 o'clock, Hoppy and Chris.